Okay, we're doing a recording on uh, the solutions for test number one for session two. Um, covering sections five one to five three. <clears throat> so here you're told to uh, find where your function is decreasing. So what you need to do is you need to take your derivative, which is going to be uh, x squared, because you move the three to the front, drop x one by one, plus three x minus 70. Set that equal to zero and factor. Factor should be pretty simple, x plus 10, x minus seven. So your critical points are negative 10 and seven. Put those on a sign chart. And then what you do is you want to, um, so you're doing is positive or negative in each of these intervals. If you're putting anything bigger than eight, obviously you're positive, negative here and positive here. So you're decreasing when G prime is, or, or it's just G, not F, sorry. When G prime is negative is when you're decreasing. So from negative 10 to seven. So the answer is D for that one. Now I did shuffle the choices among um, all of you guys. So maybe D wasn't the correct answer, maybe it was something else, but it's still negative 10 to seven. Okay, this one here. You have to interpret this correctly. This is an F prime graph. You want to see which one is a graph of F. You also have F is zero equals zero, but all of them show that. So it doesn't really help too much with eliminating choices. Now, <clears throat> how do you interpret F prime graph? The Y coordinates on F prime graph represent F prime. And what's that prime? The slope of the tangent line for the graph of F. So we see that um, F prime equals zero at four places here. F prime equals zero at X equals zero, one, uh, zero, two, three, and four. And F prime is positive from zero to two and from three to four. F prime is negative from two to three. So you gotta find the original graph that shows those tangent lines doing that. That's why the answer is gonna be, um, for me it's C, but it's gonna be this graph right here. That's because you're, you have a horizontal tangent line here here, here, and here. Obviously, you have a positive tangent line here, negative here, and positive there. So C matches with the original. If you take the slopes of the tangent lines of C, it matches with that prime graph that we're given. Okay, this is an F prime equation. And he told you as a calculator or Desmos. <clears throat> Let's say I use Desmos instead. So x cubed minus four, four sine x squared plus one. Okay, it's taking a sweet little time. Okay. All right, this is an F prime graph, right? <clears throat> so you're being asked to find a relative maximum. Relative maxims happen when F prime changes from positive to negative, okay? So, or when the Y coordinates change sign on um, that prime graph. Because remember, the y coordinates on prime graph are f prime. And that's what happens for relative maximum. So going back to Desmos, clearly uh, the y coordinates here are positive here, and the y coordinates are negative here. 
this is a net prime graph. So the only change we see from positive to negative for the y coordinates on that prime graph happens at that x coordinate that I just circle in green, which is going to be 0.542. <clears throat> this is going to be relative min, and that's going to be relative min, because it, the y values are going from negative to positive of those places. And remember, you're not looking at the tangent line. If you look at the tangent lines in f prime graph, that's f double prime net. Now you've misinterpreted it. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to look at the y coordinates of that prime graph. That's how you have to read it. And that was part of section 5.3. Um, okay, so that's that one. So the answer is 0.542. This one requires a little more um, extending yourself and a little more critical thinking. We didn't quite have a problem like this as practice, but hopefully you figure out what to do. F prime is positive, you're increasing. F is increasing. That's out because F stays the same. These all show Y is increasing when X gets bigger. So we can only eliminate just one choice so far. This means concave down. So it means that um, F prime is losing value as F gets bigger. So it means that the curves do something kind of like this. That's concave down. Concave up would be more like this. By the way, for coronavirus, we want concave down, right? We don't want, we, of course, we have new cases, but we want the rate of new cases to go down, right? So we want that derivative to be losing value, or you want a second derivative that's negative. So I was kind of joking that the reason why we're still in this pandemic is people don't know their calculus well. <laughs> so, you know, so people say, when do any of this math? You need to know this for it to survive a pandemic. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, seriously, wear a mask, all that, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, really, you want this rate to slow down, right? This is what we're this is what we're looking for. If you want a second rate that's negative, the rate's gonna be slowing down for d, because the slope between these first two points was two, then between the second two points was one. So uh, we we notice that the rate's slowing down for d. That's what we're asking you're being asked to do. That's why it's that choice. Going with four, six, seven for the um, second column. But yeah, you could totally look at the um, coronavirus curve and that's, you want concave down, you want things to reopen, right? You want to go to a restaurant, you want to go to a sporting event, this is what has to happen. Uh, this was a little tricky also, it's a little more theoretical, I think. Um, so you told us this um, in a closed interval, great, but it doesn't attain a maximum value. The reason it wouldn't attain a maximum value is because you, you lack the continuity. That's the reason why. Not because of a vertical asymptote, um, but you can still not have the vertical asymptote and still not have the maximum value. So in the absence of the vertical asymptote, we would still have the situation happening. Like if you have something kind of like this here, here's A, here's B, um, how come I didn't have maximum value? Because I was not continuous. Um, the vertical asymptote doesn't really matter. Bounded means, um, there's kind of like an upper limit to the graph. You can be bounded, like this is bounded for sure. Um, but, or you could have, um, you actually could have a hole. That's still bounded too. Bounded when you're not bound means you're you're going up, you're going towards infinity for y, or down forever towards negative infinity. But it doesn't matter, and it doesn't attain. Who cares? We're looking for maximums, so c is out. So that just requires a little more theory for that one. Uh, the rest were pre-response questions, um, and I'm trying to think here. I don't want to spend too much time going over, and I don't have a worked out solution key, but what I could do is I could anonymously share someone's work. So I'm not sharing my screen right now. So I won't, um, just for confidentiality reasons, I won't. Uh, but I'll share someone who did well. And then if you notice your hand right, you can just give yourself a pound the back, but I won't say who. I, 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 
what I should do is I should actually ask the person, but it's okay. Just for the sake of uh, time, let's let me download this first and then I'll open it somewhere else. So this is what I consider to be a model solution. Um, now I'm going to share my screen. Again, if it's your work, you can give yourself a pat on the back. Um, back to sharing. And we are recording. OK, so here's number six. Um, you got your original function. You got to say the EBT applies. Because if you don't say that, then I don't really know if it's an absolute max or min, because I don't know if it's closed or it's continuous. This is going to be closed and continuous. You just use your graphing calculator or Desmos to just see what's happening. Take the derivative, set equals zero, solve for x, you get zero and two. And you got to test your endpoints. So you test your endpoints and the critical points. So you're the highest and lowest values. That's all. That's all you do. If you missed some points, I did try putting the feedback why you missed it. If you're still confused, just talk to me. So. And those are the answers right there. Um, I'll definitely share um, some detailed solutions when I get a chance. The seven, MBT problem. You gotta do a sketch, that's easy. You gotta see the conditions, you gotta be differential and open interval, you gotta be closed. Actually, it should be open, not closed, but that's okay. Uh, but continuity has to be closed. And then you gotta find the slope F of B minus F of A, sorry, F of B minus F of A over B minus A, which apparently is that, when you plug into the original function. Um, yeah, that looks, um, I think, correct to me. Yeah, it seems correct to me. And then you take the derivative, do that correctly. So you gotta do a chain rule. Drop the exponent by one, then solve. You get two answers. But you discard the negative one because negative one point seven three is on the interval. If you kept that there, it probably took up a point. I think. If you bought algebra, I couldn't follow it. Maybe I took up two points. Talk to me if you had a hard time with the algebra. I could work with you. Algebra and six are usually pretty unique and hard to figure out. So just talk to me. We could look at it together. But if you do algebra correctly, you should get positive root three. Lastly, for number eight, um, what you want to do here is um, take the derivative again. Really easy to do. Set equals zero, solve for x. That's where your potential local extremes could happen. Do a sign chart. If so you're doing the first root test, you're trying to see where the derivative is positive and negative. It's positive to the far left and far right, negative in the middle. Because we go from positive to negative, that's the local max, that's negative root four over three. If you go from negative to positive, that's local min, at positive square root of four over three. And you have to write the right way. You can't just, do, if you just did this stuff and stop there, I didn't, probably didn't give you the, all the points for it because you have to use the AP style language. Yes, it is a local max at bl there, blah, 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 because I've probably changed the sign at that place and likewise for the local min. And of course you should state the y value as well, what the y value is at that local min or max. Um, now some of you guys put the answer within the test within the online test itself. I may have forgotten to look at it and I probably thought you didn't do it when you submitted your work. And so I probably didn't give you a practical points. I did it for a couple of people where I didn't notice that they actually um, let me stop sharing really quickly here. So I don't want anyone's test to be exposed. Um, just show you really quickly here. Or anyone's names to be exposed. Um, so so we put your answers here, which is fine. Um, you know, I, I prefer you put it in the work because I think first of all, I think it's easier for you instead of typing it out. Um, but yeah, it's even say you'll submit your answer in your work use this to work for testing because sometimes I kind of gloss over this. I'll look more carefully next time. Um, but if you just put in the work that you submit, that might be a little easier for me, just so you know. Um, anyway, going back to um, the solutions, uh, which is right here. 
Um, part two for concatenate the second derivative, that's easy. Z equals zero, do your sign chart for the second derivative. Do you the second derivative is positive or negative and just make your statements there using AP style language, which is what you see there. Part three, you have a point of inflection, you have a change of concavity, which happens at zero. So, so there you go there. And because you're concave down from negative infinity to zero, concave up from zero to infinity, we see the curve looking like this. We see our highs and lows, we're okay. And we didn't have a, a restricted domain, so the arrows point up and down as you see there. Okay, uh, so that covers going to the test. So now we're going to move on to um, our lesson for today. I'm going to stop recording.